Hello, and welcome to our podcast on Literary Lenses. One text, many ways of seeing it. Let's go ahead and jump right in and see what we're talking about. So what are literary lenses? These are the different perspectives that we may apply to a piece of text to help us understand and then interpret that text. We have to face it down toward the bottom there. We bring different angles to texts already. We come with different experiences in terms of background knowledge, and we naturally focus on different parts of the text just because of who we are, where we come from, what we believe, our life experiences. The point of literary lenses is to help focus those a little bit more. And rather than just say, well, I am a middle-class suburban housewife, and therefore I read every single text through that lens, we might want to say, well, let's examine it through the power lens. Who's really in charge in this text? So asking us to step outside maybe our comfort zone and look at text in a slightly different way based on what each lens asks for. And so why do literary lenses matter? These different lenses, once we give them some names, help us focus our reading attention on different parts, things that may not jump out just on our own natural independent reading. And if we can focus on certain elements, those certain elements may help us deduce or figure out the text's theme. And if the theme is the author's comment on being human, on humanity, some sort of lesson for all of humanity, that's a good thing if we've been able to figure that out. And sometimes different texts have different angles on their own. And if we can focus our attention on those through the use of literary lenses, it may help us take one better step toward figuring out the theme of that text. So how do we use lenses? I mean, it's, not, it's nothing physical. It's not like you put on a pair of sunglasses and all of a sudden you can see certain things. These are mental constructions that we have to think about as we are reading. So the first thing is we have to know the names of these and understand what each lens asks us to look for. We then need to commit to read actively. This is the eternal struggle as readers that we face. We tend to just move our eyes over a chapter, get to the end of it, and then say, well, what did I just read? You have fake read. We want to push you to be able to read actively, interacting with the text, paying attention to what its message is. And what these lenses do is they allow certain details to kind of pop out from the text with each different lenses reading. So let's give a concrete example for a second. You may or may not know, but different sunglasses can take different lens colors. For example, if it's a very sunny day, you might want to have a very dark lens like the upper left. If it's a kind of cloudy day, you might want to have the amber or the yellowish lens over on the right. And for any hunters in the audience, the bright yellow really helps bring out a lot of detail. So what do these do? Under different circumstances, different lenses are needed to see the same text. Think about it when you are skiing. If you have an exceptionally sunny, sunny day, a dark lens will help filter out some of those bright rays and help you see the terrain. But if you're skiing on a cloudy day, then you have what we call flat light, that it's very difficult to see the dips and curves and terrain changes with a dark lens. You may want to go to an amber lens. That will help highlight certain changes in pitch or curvature and help you ski better. The short is, regardless of what lens color you are using, you are still looking at the same exact text as the person sitting next to you. The words are still the same. If there's illustrations, they are all the same. If you're looking at a ski run, the trees are still there for you, just like for the guy next to you. But by adding a different lens to that text, whether it's ski run, poem, movie, whatever, different details will pop out at you if your brain is focused on what the lens asks you to focus on. For example, we have this visual illusion going on here. We say at the top, nice vase, huh? Well, if you're looking at it and your brain focuses on the black section, then yes, it looks completely like a vase. But if you're able to step back and change your brain's focus to the white portion, it almost looks as if there are two faces staring at each other. And those two faces serve as the space around the black section, which looks like a vase. So whatever your eyes are drawn to first doesn't really matter. 
The fact is, if you see the black first or the white first, you are both looking at the same text. There aren't two pictures up here, it's one picture. And depending on how your brain focuses, you may see different things. Here's another example. Go ahead and stop the podcast and count the pandas that you see. I'm going to guess that most people are drawn instantly to the two black and white pandas there right in the middle. But I think if you look more closely, you can see the faint images or outlines of some pandas in the rocks at the bottom, in the bamboo on the left, and even into the background of the upper right. Again, you may be focusing on different parts. Your brain might be seeing different colors. You might be using a kind of different lens, but we're all looking at the same text. And one more example here. Go ahead and stop this and see what you see. So what's the point? Let's go back to literary lenses. Let's go back to the English class thing. Do we all see literature or any other text the same way? And of course, we don't. We all come with different life experiences, different sets of background knowledge, different languages, socioeconomic status, different histories. Therefore, we are naturally drawn to certain parts of a text. What we're asking you to do with these literary lenses that we'll show you in a minute is to focus on other aspects. You may naturally always tend to focus on certain things. We're just asking you to be able to focus on not only that naturally, but a couple others that will bring out different highlights of the text based on the lens. So these are the five literary lenses that we will be studying in this English class. If you truly want to get into this and take way more deep classes and go on to college and major in English, you can study a wide variety of other lenses. We're going to focus on these ones to keep it simple. Let's go ahead and look at each one in a little bit more depth. So the historical lens, what it actually is, is looking at a text through its connections to history. And so that could be on a couple levels. For example, Of Mice and Men was written in the Depression about the Depression. There are going to be certain historical ties that jump out. The fact that George and Lenny have to find work, well, that's a historical connection. Many people are out of work during the Depression. That would matter more in a Depression-era book. We also have a text like The Crucible, which is kind of interesting because it was written during the Cold War, the 1950s, but it's actually about the Salem Witch Trials. So we have two different historical time periods with which to connect. On the level, it seems to be text talking about the Salem Witch Trials of the 1790s. But when we get down to it, this really isn't about the Salem Witch Trials. This is more about the McCarthyism era or the witch hunts of the 1950s during the Cold War. So as we read the Crucible through the historical lens, we could examine it for the Salem Witch Trial connections. We could also examine it through the connections to the 1950s, the time period in which it was written. So how do we look through this lens? We need to examine the historical connections of this text. Maybe when was it written? What's the time period that it's about? If it's set during the time of kings and queens, how accurate is it? Is it completely historically accurate, or are they just taking the general idea of a monarchy and then twisting it? Those would lead us to different interpretations of theme. We have to admit that most of the readings we do here at our high school are probably done through this lens. Since we have the freshman integrated course and then the sophomore integrated course that's paired with world history and world literature, most times you're going to be reading pieces through that historic lens just naturally. If you're going to be studying ancient Greece, you're going to be reading the Odyssey. If you're going to be studying the Holocaust, you'd be reading the book of Night primarily through the historical lens. How do these overlap with the historical time period, either that they are about or that they were written in? So the next lens we'd like you to consider is what we call the feminist lens. Now, just because it says feminist and just because that sounds like female, it doesn't mean that it only has to deal with women or girl issues. This is the lens that looks at text through a gender or sexuality lens. And so, yes, on the level, it's going to examine the relationships between males and females. Males and males, females and females, stereotypical gender roles and how those are expressed in the text. 
But that doesn't just mean that we only look at the girl end of things. We're definitely going to be looking at male stereotypes and gender roles as well. So how do we focus our attention through the feminist lens? Well, let's look at the genders of the characters. Let's consider stereotypes. And then let's kind of figure out, well, does the girl character act in a stereotypically girl way? Does she choose to reject that stereotype and play sports or be a business leader or whatnot? And vice versa with the boys. Where do they follow or where do they break stereotypes? That could be one way we could be looking through that feminist lens. Another way is consider the gender of the author. Does a female writer offer a different perspective on an issue than a male writer? Does he or she grow up in a different set of circumstances than an author of the opposite gender? How might they handle the particular theme being explored? A girl might handle that differently from a boy. And then at the bottom there, what roles do gender and sexuality play in this work? How does the text play out if we have a homosexual character? Does the text embrace that character and say, you are what you are? Or does that text reject that character? Those would be two completely different messages for the theme. And so the feminist lens isn't just looking at female stereotypes. It's looking at female and male stereotypes, hetero and homosexual stereotypes, and looking at gender and sexuality in general.